Hi everyone and welcome to And So On. My name is Lisa and today I'm going to share the things that I've been making as well as some more news and plans. So I hope that you notice if you saw my last video that things are much more organized, much less a disaster zone than last time. Um, if you look at these bins here in boxes, this is a lot of my sewing space uh, done. I would say I probably have one more bin left to do. I did, you can't see down here. <laughs> <laughs> um, I did leave a few things out and actually only having a few weeks left has really ignited my sojo so I can't wait to show you what I've made including this top um, but first I want to let you know that if you remember last time I was telling you that we still didn't have our uh, visa in place for Spain and that was a bit of a stress because they said it could take eight weeks and we would have to change our flights if it didn't come back in time and um, I was really kind of stressed about that and the day after I put up my last video they called and I thought they called because there was some sort of mistake or something else they needed um, but they called because it was ready and so we're approved yay so we're going to Spain Quillen and I actually went and picked up the the passports with the visas in them um, just this morning so it's official 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 and we actually move out of our house one month today and we arrive in Spain six weeks today yeah so lots going on and I think the hitting the one month mark kind of makes you go oh Oh, okay. Like you gotta, you gotta go. So, um, I did still want to be able to sew though. And thank you all for your lovely comments last time. Um, you guys were so sweet and, and, you know, just encouraging me that of course there's going to be fabric in Spain. Of course there is. There's going to be amazing fabric in Spain. It's just that I don't want to, you know, I don't want to spend money on something that I already have here. Um, to an extent, but then I guess that's kind of part of the experience is to find things in Spain that represent where I am there and not stuff from here, right? Be in the now, and I, I do really agree with that. So I probably will still bring a little bit of fabric with me, but maybe not as much as I was originally intending. And then in terms of making, I also kind of thought about it and thought, you know what, let's instead of figuring out what do I want to make, let's figure out the fabrics that I really want to wear and then pick patterns that go with those. So there's some crossover with the patterns I showed you last time, but then there's gonna be some different things as well. In and, and also in the last two days, I've made three items, and so I wanted to share them with you. So I'll share the one that I'm wearing first. This is the Roscoe blouse, and I'm sure you all are very familiar. Uh, you know what, I'm not gonna stand up because <laughs> <laughs> it won't help. I will put in pictures. That will help. Okay, so uh, I made this yesterday. I finished it last night. I made the size 2, which is the second to smallest size, and I did that because um, when I've seen the Roscoe, you know, over the last years or however long it's been, I sometimes find it to be a little too bulky for me, uh, a little too boho, and I wanted it to be a little more fitted. So I picked the 2, and I have to say the fit is great except for I find the arms too small and or too short not too small too short I, I think I'm kind of getting used to it when I first tried it on I was like oh no and of course I should have read that the, the pattern <laughs> that says that it was drafted for someone who was five foot five and I actually have long arms so I often need to add to the arms um, but you know what I kind of like it because what it does is it, it creates this sort of poof at the top um, it can't really go over my elbows and I am a little bit worried that it might shrink over time. I considered maybe opening up here and finishing with bias binding and then maybe putting a little bit of elastic, but for now I'm going to leave it. I love this fabric. So I think I showed you guys that this fabric has these, um, these little fringy bits on all of these. It's the Loomis fabric by Anna Maria Horner and I definitely did some pattern placement. I tried to get the arms similar. Um, and I did the front and the back with this, you know, cross pattern on the front. So the best thing about this is it is so light and breezy and really comfortable. And I find in the summer, even when it's hot, I really like to have something on my shoulders. Um, I'll often in the evening wear a little blouse or something over top. So this will really work with, you know, the things that I like to wear. And it's got a little pop of color, but it's very light and breezy and lovely. And it was just a really lovely make like I just really enjoyed making this and um, I might squeak out one more before we go we'll see 
So next, last time I showed you guys this pattern by Cotton and Chalk. It's the Jenna jumpsuit, and I have been looking forward to making this for ages. So for this one, I made the size small, and I used this fabric from the Textile Museum of Canada. So this was a $5 remnant. Um, it's great fabric. I really like it. I love the way the stripes turned out. Um, it's actually cut on the bias anyway, so I didn't have to, to twist or turn anything. It's very easy to finish the armholes because there's no bias binding. You're just turning it in and it's got pockets. It's very roomy. Um, I'll put in some pictures here of me wearing it. So I really like this pattern a lot. Um, if anything, I found that the, the rise was too low for me, which is something that's happening a lot lately. So, and I do find it's maybe a little bigger than it needs to be. So I've already taken the powder pieces and marked them to the extra small size. And um, I think I will probably take the rise up still about a half an inch but I have to wait and see like on that length and shorten line um, because I think I could even just use the that pattern as pants um, but wow so comfortable and I got so many compliments and people actually said I can totally see you wearing that in Spain <laughs> and I was like it's kind of why I made it <laughs> and since I really love that pattern and I already had it out I decided to make a quick top using the top of this pattern so I just used the top half and then I just cut uh, I think it was three inches um, strips to make uh, a waistband. And the waistband actually isn't even doubled over. It's just turned around and hemmed using my serger. Well, not hemmed using my serger, but serge the edge and then turned it up for the hem. I did, after the fact, just tack it here so that it doesn't open too much. I don't know for sure if I need that. Um, but this is using that Bora woven fabric from Moda that I got for Mother's Day. and. I love this. This feels amazing and I can really see myself wearing it a lot this summer. So I'll put in some pictures of that one too. Um, yeah, it just turned out really, really well and I was really happy to kind of get something and use it and not have it kind of sit around. Like this fabric I bought a year ago, almost a year ago in Victoria when we were out there and I just had the chance to use it now. So I love the idea that I kind of get it in, get it out, get it on me. <laughs> little project that I have coming up. You guys may remember this jumpsuit that I made in, I made it September of 2017. So it was sort of one of my first garments when I got back from our last trip. And it was my first zipper and it was my first line bodice and my first like jumpsuit. It was just a, a really great piece. The problem with it, I'll put some pictures of, it, of this one in. The only problem with this one is that I find because of, I think because of the length, um, I don't wear it because it feels fancy. It doesn't feel like something you just put on and, and wear out. And so because of that, I've probably only worn it four or five times, but I really, really like it. So I've chopped it. <laughs> I chopped three inches off the bottom. I've already done it, so don't talk me out of it. Uh, I took three and a half inches off the bottom and I'm going to use that three and a half inches to make a sash. And I feel like I will wear it more um, now, of course, I still have to hem this, you know, but um, I'll just do a double do a double hem or maybe even just a single turn up. I don't know yet. Um, but I think it being a little bit shorter and with the tie, it will feel a little more casual. And then hopefully I'll get a little more wear of it out of it because it's such a great piece. So last night I was up late and uh, just honestly thinking about sewing. Does sewing ever keep you up at night? It, does, it keeps me up at night just thinking about what I'm going to make. And uh, I was making a list in my notebook of things I want to make before we go. I got to about eight or, ten, eight or ten things, so I don't know. Although I just did three in two days, so I mean, it's totally doable. But uh, as I said before, I'm moving now towards what do I want to use? What fabric do I want to wear? Rather than so much, I have this pattern, what am I going to make it with kind of thing. So here are three that I'm going to give you an up-close look at. Um, that and again this is not showing up the right color it's it's green it's like a very rich olivey green um, but this is the slub viscose I think it is slub tensile no, I don't remember but from Blackbird um, and I just love the drape of this so for this one I am either going to do another Charlie caftan which all of a sudden came into my head I'm like I love the Charlie caftan I have one long one and I'll put in a picture and I do love that but the problem is I made it with a thrifted sheet and it's actually a very light flannel sheet <laughs> so it's great when like the weather is kind of 
not too warm, but but you can't wear it in the heat because it's it's just really too hot. So I feel like this could be a great long Charlie, and I have a good amount of fabric, so I think I can I think I can get a long Charlie out of this. Um, alternatively, is the autumn dress from Style Arc, which I came across as I was uh, packing all, packing up all of my PDF patterns. I haven't made that yet. Or the last option is a Cali, and I haven't made the Cali yet, so um, I think you guys probably know that I have yet to do a buttonhole. <laughs> just just because I, I don't know, like I just, I don't know, it's silly. And I messaged my neighbor Janet, who you guys know is like, I call her my, my sewing fairy godmother, because she always has the patterns, and she comes over and helps me if I'm missing something or not getting something. And I messaged her last night, and I said, what am I going to do without my my um, sewing fairy godmother next door and she's like oh well she goes your sewing fairy godmother is challenging you to make a buttonhole <laughs> touche touche Janet so I did actually try to put the little thingy on my machine last night and it didn't fit so I'm not sure what's going on with that so I, I need to look at it and just YouTube it and figure it out but this would also make a really nice Cali um, yeah we'll see how ambitious I get the other two are ones that I bought from Michelle of Simone's Rose, and I've shown this to you before, but I, I want you to see them up close. So this one here is just the most beautiful gray. It's grayish, grayish. It's like a beigey gray, browny gray, um, cotton linen blend. And again, I have quite a lot of it. And this could also be a really nice long Charlie Caftan, really breathable, really lovely. Um, could also be a nice jumpsuit. It's a little rumply, so I think I want more structure in a jumpsuit. Could also be a Cali. I mean, these are all kind of similar things, right? But right now, right now I'm thinking Charlie, and maybe with the other one do something else a little more structured. It could also be a great jumpsuit, that one too, another, another Jenna jumpsuit or um, a hack to make it more of a Zadie. We'll see. And then lastly, I have this great gray it's got a bit of a let's see here there you can kind of see it's a gray suiting with a little bit of a stretch very light lightweight um, summer suiting it's got a little bit of a stretch I have quite a lot and for this my thought is to make summer essentials for bottoms because I find I have a lot of tops and not so many bottoms so the fez the fez pants from uh, La Maison Victor uh, look really great and I kind of want to do a pair of those to check the fit muslin it and then maybe even do a pair of shorts I could also do a pair of Pearl Soho City gym shorts out of this and the other thing I wanted to do was uh, a skirt I'd like to get another skirt maybe a wrap skirt so I don't know if I can get all three of those out of this, but I just feel like this is really beautiful, practical fabric with, with quite good drape, but, but still a decent amount of structure, which I think would be really nice for the pants. And it doesn't seem to crease either, whereas some of the other ones do crease. So right now, I know those aren't very interesting because they're all kind of plain colors and wait, okay, two quick patterns. Um, this one I've showed you before, it's the, the Blackwood, uh, sorry, it's from Blackbird and I'm just going to do a simple woven tee from this or a woven sleeveless top but that's a good way to add a little color into my wardrobe although I'm wearing color now aren't I and then this other one that I got for Mother's Day um, it could be another Roscoe or um, you know it could it could be another kind of tunicky top like the gallery tunic or something like that but I could just do another Roscoe and maybe make the sleeves a little longer. And this, that wish, this would actually be really nice. Well, the other thing I might do with that one is, wait, this, this one here, this one here. And again, I think this is one of the ones I showed you yesterday, but I like the fact that it, there you go, that it has the ties built in. And actually, ironically, it doesn't have buttonholes either. <laughs> that wasn't on purpose, but yeah. Um, so I thought that could actually be a really nice use for the blue and white because the only thing with this is I do tend to like put things over and tie them and this doesn't give me the option to do this. It's kind of a little bit different. So I was thinking that as well. Now, I'm not committing to getting all this done and I may change some things out. There's a linen top that I really want to do. There's a few other things, but the good news is, is I have done enough here 
to keep a certain someone satisfied that we are on track and um, and yeah so I'm gonna try and keep my stuff out at least this stuff that I've um, that I've kind of put aside so after I saw you guys last time I Marie condoed like folded and made like books um, in a long flat bin and so that I could see at a glance the the fabrics that were really inspiring me right now so I'm keeping that one out as well as my machines um, but I've packed away pretty much all of my patterns pretty much all of my burdas I will be bringing a few patterns with me um, not a ton because there are really lovely um, sewing magazines in Spain uh, Patrones is the one that comes to mind and so I feel like I will probably end up getting the monthly magazine because they're very inexpensive and just using those and making those more often and, and then I can still download and print and do um, PDF patterns and stuff so I'm probably not going to bring any of my Bertas with me I'm probably maybe I'll bring one or two patterns maybe I'll bring one or two that I've traced off TNTs that I know that I'm going to use like I clearly I can't leave my toaster my toaster sweater pattern behind that would be madness <laughs> so that's coming uh yeah so so I'm feeling good I'm feeling better than last time when I when I was a wee bit overwhelmed <laughs> And a wee bit stressed uh, but yeah so I wanted to show you guys that uh, my sojo has returned with a vengeance and uh, yeah this is very cute this makes me really happy uh, last thing is that we are like 10 subscribers away from 9,000 subscribers which is so exciting and this time I have asked the lovely Christiane from victory patterns to sponsor the giveaway and I actually just asked her for one PDF pattern and she said oh how about you take three take three I said okay I will take three so there will be three patterns for giveaway I will bring Instagram on this as well so you'll have extra chances to win on Instagram um, just because there's three patterns I want to share the love but if you haven't seen victory patterns I will link them below they're beautiful beautiful and uh, a Toronto designer I'm actually taking a course with her next Saturday at her house and uh, I'll bring you guys along for that I hope as long as she is cool with it and the other people in the room are cool with it so I can't promise but that's my intention is to do that um, but yeah I'm really really excited so once we hit 9,000 which hopefully will be in time for the next video then I will again gather together some new sewing vloggers or some new to me sewing vloggers that perhaps might be new to you and introduce you just as always. If there's anyone that you think that I haven't featured before that you think I should feature, someone who will say, I used to say under a thousand subscribers, but now let's say under 2000 subscribers, um, who I can feature, even if it's you and I've missed you in the past, it's not personal, I, I'm doing my best. So please do link me up below, let me know what, what the name of the channel is and I will do my best to include it. Okay guys, that is all for me. I will talk to you soon, bye-bye.